Hey there YouTube, Air of Carthage here. Gonna bring you a very special commentary on the Waterfalls map. You can actually see this game is being played between Bell and Can Critter RW. I'm actually doing the commentary for Bell. Uh, her channel on YouTube is Kitty SN. I will try and put a link up in this video and in the description. It seems like that name Can Critter RW is familiar too, but I can't remember why I think it's familiar. In any case, the Waterfalls map is kind of a tiered map. You can see that the highest you know, terrain is off to the left, and then it tiers down into lower terrain, um, the further right, you know, as I'm looking at it. <clears throat> it depends on which side of the map you start on, of course, if that's actually the case. And it's got some rock formations and um, some uh, small rivers and stuff like that that are affecting your movement. There's also some trees and other things, so it's got quite a few land features, and um, can be a very tactical map if it's played that way. Now one of the reasons I wanted to show you this battle um, is, well first and foremost, I wanted to show you uh, Bell play. She was actually ranked on the top of the leaderboard uh, for quite a long time. Very good Shogun player. Um, you can see that she's got some wicked upgrades on some of these units. Um, absolutely fantastic upgrades. In fact, most all of them are level 9. But the part of the reason for that is this battle is actually a, um, a 22k battle, which is the Ultra Funds. And whenever you're playing in the Ultra Funds battle, you better make sure you have a lot of really uh, high-ranking veterans. I do not, and so I would be actually pretty bad in an Ultra Funds battle because you have enough money to not only bring a lot of troops, but to bring extremely high-quality uh, troops. So it, it's quality and quantity. And really, uh, having the best veteran troops possible is, um, is really helpful in these types of battles. So you can see that Bell is going to run up with her two vocab units and immediately start taking shots into the enemy troops to try and slow them down or disorganize their approach. Her two vocab units have pretty interesting names. This one is Pestilence and this one is Providence. <laughs> thought that was pretty, uh, pretty creative. Uh, she does a good job, I think, with creative army selection. Uh, seems to be very good at skirmishing. And here you can see uh, some of her enemy's troops laying on the ground. Uh, these guys aren't even writhing in pain. I guess those bocav shoot so straight and true that they just die. <clears throat> Let's take a look at Bell's army in its entirety. She's actually got a very heavy skirmishing component, two bocav. She's got four bow warrior monks. Or, sorry, bow samurai. Well, I thought, yeah, some of them are bow warrior monks. I saw that wrong the first time. She's got this one unit of bow warrior monks, and the remainder are bow samurai. Let's see, we got Cinnamon is a uh, bow samurai. This bow warrior monk doesn't have a special name. Then we have Dewdrop and Buttercup, which are two more Bow Samurai, both level 9. Uh, these names crack me up. Uh, then we have uh, Bubblegum, which is a Matchlock Samurai. Uh, Chocolate is the other Matchlock Samurai. Uh, I don't believe her Katana Samurai have any special names. Uh, but then back here we have a Bow Hero that has four chevrons. Uh, her avatar unit is uh, Mademoiselle Belle. And I don't know if this is pre-patch or whatnot, but there's uh, Mademoiselle Belle. And then, um, <laughs> I just love these names, it cracks me up. Um, you can actually hear some fire rockets going off in the background. You can see your bow cab running away from those. And then right here we have the, uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that one. <laughs> some kind of Japanese name there. Uh, this is a Naginata Samurai with nine chevrons. Excellent unit there. And then uh, these are a couple of my favorite units because I did nothing but math and science in college. This is the Tangent Guard. And then the other unit is the, uh, I believe, the Sign Guard. Or no, Cosign Guard. Yeah, we have the Cosign Guard and the Tangent Guard. And <clears throat> there might actually have been a Sign Guard somewhere. So anyway, that cracks me up. I'm glad to see someone else enjoying some trigonometry there. Uh, <coughs> you all... <coughs> Sorry, excuse my voice. All right, I think I got my throat cleared out there. Um, you all might remember Bell from one of my previous videos. It was a Rome Total War video. And um, she and I played a couple of battles... And, uh, you know, in, in my last video with Bell, actually, my men were being given their final exam from Bell's school of death by Sarissa's, and, uh, and my men were passing with flying colors as they uh, died sandwiched between her two walls of Sarissa's. So, yes, it, it's a school that um, definitely teaches you some interesting lessons. So anytime you get a chance to attend uh, Bell's school of uh, uh, Sarissa-induced pain and uh, suffering, it's a good opportunity, and I think I have my diploma from that school from the last video. <laughs> um, so I wanted to show you this video. I enjoyed playing against her. She makes interesting YouTube videos. And another reason I wanted to show you this video is because it's very different than the way I play. It's very different from the types of battles I play. You're going to see a type of patience and strategy here that isn't present in my type of strategy. You know, I play, um, you know, hot and heavy, get after it, 
uh, Rush Army type games where I'm in someone's face fast, uh, large numbers of sometimes low quality troops. Uh, you know, I just I do stuff like that. Um, and this battle is very, very different. So let's take a look at Can Critter's army real quick while things are slow. He's got a Yari Ashigaru at the front there with five chevrons. Here's his general, and I believe it is a bow general. Um, I think he has a couple of leadership abilities, but a bow general for the most part. He's got two great guard. Uh, that one has one chevron. Let's try and look at his troops as they come through. He's got two matchlock warrior monks with eight chevrons. Very, very powerful unit. And then he's got, um, I believe, several bow warrior monks, all with uh, seven chevrons or more. There's one, two, three, four. Yeah, sure enough, four bow warrior monks. Um, so he has got a significant skirmishing element as well. And then he's got this unit of fire rockets, which I saw passing right here. This is the unit of fire rockets. Uh, those guys uh, have five chevrons and have actually some pretty devastating accuracy. Let's see, here's his other great guard unit. It is, uh, he calls it Casino. And uh, these guys have seven chevrons, so a very tough unit. Let's try and take a look at his infantry. It's all mixed up. He's got a Naginata Warrior Monk there. Um, another Naginata Warrior Monk. And then a couple of extremely well vetted up uh, Katana Samurai. And then right here, a Yari Samurai with very good bon uh, uh, chevronage going on. And let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, for his army. And you can see that he's approaching Bell. He's captured this archery dojo. So Bell went up on the terrain. And she's uh, gone ahead. <coughs> she hasn't captured this building yet, the sword dojo. But she is capturing right now this uh, workshop. Which is a good move, because the workshop increases your armor. And armor is very helpful against missile attack. And you can definitely tell this is going to be a very missile-heavy army. Or a very missile-heavy battle. But also, you know, he's got the archery dojo over here. So he has an unlimited supply of ammunition as long as he holds it. Um, as well as uh, increased accuracy uh, in his skirmishing. So, definitely handy to capture those buildings. <coughs> Bell is actually not capturing this building right at the moment, though she may do so later. She's got her troops on loose formation, and the reason for this is uh, her enemy is got these fire rockets, and I think she is tempting him to just go ahead and fire some shots. These units do have very limited ammunition, and uh, sometimes it is a good idea just to spread out your troops, keep your general safe, and just let these guys fire. Uh, because sometimes you can just get them to waste their ammunition and uh, not take too terribly many casualties. But these units do have some chevrons. Fire rockets are more accurate, it seems like, than mangonels, though they do have less range. <coughs> we'll watch them fire. Oh, check that out! <laughs> that was like a backfire. <laughs> Knocked a couple of them over and killed some. <laughs> Oh man, talk about a fail. <laughs> Sorry, I'll try and quit laughing. Look at this poor sap fire the rocket right into the ground and killed himself. Oh, I don't think it, uh, that might be one of the funniest Total War moments I've ever seen. It reminds me of something like Halo, whenever I'm trying to stick some with a grenade, and I end up sticking myself or something. Oh, that's great. Anyway, he's moved his fire rockets out of the woods, so there's five free kills for Bell. Um, but now you can see that these fire rockets are going to open up. Uh, on Bell's forces who are now positioned nicely up on that hill. Um, but like I said, these guys have pretty devastating effect, actually. We'll, uh, we'll watch some of their uh, rockets here. We'll follow them out. You can see them flying in here, and then let's watch the effects as they uh, hit. Ooh, that guy went flying. Wow. Yeah, these rockets are uh, actually causing some really nice damage. You can see this unit here has lost 16 men already. Uh, she's lost 3 out of this unit. Um, nine out of that unit, and seven out of this unit. So those fire rockets are causing some very well distributed uh, casualties. Um, so Bell has really got to have some patience to sit here and take these, and I know it's got to be agitating. But of course, she's not going to be in any rush to uh, to rush forward and get these guys because they're backed up by a significant number of bow warrior monks, great guard, and uh, matchlock warrior monks with some excellent upgrades. So yeah, she's she's got to be careful about how she approaches this. And of course, her bow cab is handy and mobile but also limited in range. So although this Providence unit can rain down Divine Providence upon the enemy player for her, she's got to be careful about the range in which she uses it because they can get whipped up on very fast by those Bow Warrior monks. And I, I love this unit over here, Pestilence. <laughs> the Pokemon, that's just great. Um, it's too bad it can't be like Halo, you know, where you have like the little Pestilence thing and there's like flies and a green cloud swarming around them. Uh, I think that would be very fitting considering the name. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you all have ever seen those armor effects on Halo where you can have like the thunderstorm or the pestilence or the heart attack. Uh, I can only imagine that Bell would probably use the heart attack. Uh, I guess whenever your character dies, you know, the little hearts pop out everywhere. 
I want to get the pestilence one, of course, so that any time someone shoots me, they see a, a big cloud of disgusting, uh, like, odorous, uh, infectious, noxious cloud come out of my body. I think that would probably be the best. Anyway, that's Halo. That's another game, another story. <clears throat> so you can see the fire, uh, fire rockets have actually withdrawn uh, for the time being. Uh, maybe to make them go recharge their ammo. Uh, that's probably what they're doing, actually, because, like I said, this archery dojo, they can regain their ammo slowly over time. It does not happen very quick. And remember the last time I tried to use the uh, ammo replenishing effect of the fire rockets, uh, or I mean of the uh, archery dojo, my bow warrior monks got destroyed uh, in, in one of those videos I showed you. Like I said, I hope you're enjoying this video. Um, I know it's kind of a long battle, but I want you to see the whole thing. And again, like I said, it's a very interesting battle because it's just very different um, from the type of fight that I fight. And uh, it takes a different set of skills, and I want you to see it because, you know, there's more ways than one to play Shogun 2. That's one of the things I like about all the Total War games, is there's usually multiple ways to do well. Here you can see the whistling arrow effects on this uh, samurai unit. I've actually heard that that does not uh, maintain its effect in melee combat. Um, if, it, if that's true, you know, someone let me know. I'd like to know about that. Anyway, she's using uh, the Pestilence unit here to uh, some, take some shots at these uh, retreating Bow Warrior monks. And over here, this unit of Bow Warrior monks, ha or this, this is a Bow Hero. Wow, they got separated. This is a dangerous uh, mistake indeed. Uh, Bell almost caught these guys and now they're going to run off but I mean I'm definitely sure she's going to be taking shots into the back of these guys as this is a very high value target a 5 chevron uh, bow hero has got to be approaching um, the 2000 koku range uh, they have 200 range and all types of special abilities so definitely a very expensive unit um, and leaving them exposed like that was a mistake on Can Critter's part but you can see that he is retreating all of his troops, and the reason he can do this safely too is because Bell does have a limited amount of cavalry, and it is not melee cavalry. So um, he is able to retreat at this time, but she is raining down arrows on the rear um, of his troops. That was pretty cool, that kill right there. Uh, took down one of those uh, Great Guard. And uh, this is Can Critter's avatar, and again, I believe he is a bow general, which is probably why he's using him so aggressively in the skirmishing here. And there comes more of those fire rockets. So he's going to try and drive Bell back, but you can see the forest does reduce the effect of the fire rockets. So her troops hiding here will give them significant cover uh, from those particular rockets, because you can see a lot of them are hitting in the trees rather than actually hitting the ground. So it looks like the battle's entering a new phase. Both players have repositioned once. And uh, check this out, it's pretty cool. You know, there's like arrows all over the ground. And you can see where the skirmishes are taking place. Uh, and again, like I said, I like, um, I can't play well, uh, you know, in a skirmish fight. I'm, I'm just not good at it. Uh, but I, I liked uh, the opportunity to show you here uh, someone who can play well in a skirmish army. And it seems like Bell is, um, has always been quite good at skirmishing. Uh, so it, it's, it's a tactic that, if used properly, is pretty deadly effective on all kinds of Total War games. Yeah, so check out those fire rockets coming in. Uh, again, very deadly uh, situation. It didn't kill huge numbers, but it is making casualties, and it's spread over a wide area. So definitely a dangerous situation. Now she's going to use these vocab to try and get shots, uh, probably draw fire from the enemy troops. That's what I like to use vocab for, so I'm just assuming here. <coughs> you can see this unit draws out all the fire arrows from those uh, bow warrior monks of the enemy. And although they do take a lot of casualties, to get him to waste those fire arrows and other things is definitely a worthy cause. And here you can see that she does it even better. Um, those fire arrows cost almost no damage to her vocab, and she's able to cause him to waste those special abilities. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe he'll regain them over time, uh, but, you know, who knows how long, you know, a battle will last sometimes and when you need uh, those type of special abilities like that. But you can see that those Bow Warrior Monk veterans up here are uh, exceedingly deadly, and um, they can deal a large amount of damage very quickly and over vast distance. And he's got an excellent position here because uh, no frontal assault can be made on his position due to these rocks. Uh, you have to come from one of two directions. So it's definitely the reason why Can Critter's taken up on this hill. And when you take a skirmish army, a lot of people say it's camping. And, um, you know, I, I guess in some respects it is. But when you take a skirmish army, part of your strategy really needs to be to maximize the damage of that skirmishing component. Or else you're really wasting a lot of money. So it doesn't make sense to really bring a skirmishing army and rush right into combat. Um, so a proper skirmishing army needs the opportunity to uh, expend its missiles and cause the most damage possible. And using the terrain to help give you that advantage is definitely a smart move. <clears throat> so I definitely agree with the way that Can Critter has set up up here, even though some people might consider this cheap. Um, but again, Bell and Can Critter have both 
uh, brought you know, very skirmish involved armies. Um, so it's it's definitely a necessary tactic. Now look at this. Just rips up this unit of Yari Samurai. I think she may be trying to uh, whittle down his uh, infantry numbers and just let his own bows expend their ammunition on her bows. Uh, because now the uh, the archery dojo is falling out of control of Can Critter because Bell has a unit right here uh, working on capturing it. So uh, Can Critter is going to lose that advantage and lose his ability to replenish his missiles. So maybe Bell is just um, trying to do damage where she can do it. And it looks like she's got this unit of bows and this unit of spears uh, very heavily damaged. Elsewhere, let's see what kind of damage she's causing. 64 out of 75, 62 out of 75, and another 62. And these Matchlock Warrior Monks actually fired from behind, so that actually might have been what caused some of those casualties. And look, sh here she's still using this Bocab unit to absorb fire and to keep these units busy. And uh, she did lose that Bocab unit finally, but they've served um, quite well in uh, causing distraction and also causing a few casualties. So I, I, I've actually become a huge fan of Bocab uh, recently. Uh, I'm a big fan of it just... Um, mainly because of its mobility and distraction abilities. It's not necessarily super damaging, uh, but it definitely has some fantastic um, some fantastic purposes in, in my eyes uh, in a battle. So I like to bring bow cavalry. I don't always bring it, but I do like to bring it. Uh, in fact, a lot of times I just forego foot archers altogether and bring bow cavalry. And again, it's not because the bow cavalry are going to cause more damage. It's simply because they're mobile. And if someone brings, you know, four, like I just played an army where someone brought four matchlock, or er, sorry, four bow warrior monks against me. And um, I simply ran around the front of their line. And that makes it to where their bow warrior monks then have to turn away from my infantry and fire elsewhere and focus on my cavalry or else take, uh, take losses from behind. So it's the distraction and um, the area of control effect that I like with bow cavalry. And I'm not sure if Belle agrees with me on that. I can't speak for her, but I definitely think that uh, whether or not that's what she planned, I'm sure that's the uh, one of the effects that she was getting out of her Bocav. Let's see. I wonder if she still has that other unit of Bocav. I believe both of her Bocav units have routed. So she has lost uh, the the mounted mobility of those bow units. Here, this Great Guard unit was lured into attacking these bows, and she's going to cut them down with her Matchlock Samurai. And um, you can see that they absolutely did kill every last single unit of that Great Guard. Um, and here, some of the Bow Warrior Monks are rushing forward. I'm not sure if it's because they're out of ammo uh, or what. Um, I'm assuming they might be out of ammo. And he's got those Matchlock Warrior Monks. You can see they must have a range increase because they are firing from quite some range back there. So Belle lost this Bow Samurai. She does still have her Matchlock units. And I see arrows coming back here, so she also has this Bow Hero. She might be saving the ammunition and just keeping those bow heroes safe for now. That would be my guess on those as well. These matchlock samurai look like they've reloaded, and now they're going to open up into the back of these bow warrior monks. Like this, wow! That unit was accurate. Holy crap! Just here, here's the last guy standing. Jiminy Cricket. Oh, <laughs> that was brutal. Wow, those units have some accuracy. Um, I'm assuming that since they have that many chevrons, that one of their upgrades is probably accuracy. And it also looked like they were firing by rank. So, wow, that was incredible. Uh, some really fantastic accuracy out of that unit. Looks like these um, matchlock samurai are attempting to uh, reload and fire. Some of them are just standing there. I'm not sure why they're not firing. There they go. Uh, they are going to die under this extended bow fire, but she has them spread in one single line in loose formation, so that will keep them in the fight for as long as possible. And uh, Matchlock do have a major impact again on morale, and they cause significant casualties to enemy units who are in range. Um, very powerful units on this game. The downside to them is, though, is that uh, once engaged by melee troops or cavalry, they are almost immediately dead. Um, a lot of people in this game tend to think that Matchlock is overpowered. Um, I do believe that it is in some respects. Uh, however, I've played against a lot of matchlock spams and it did not usually go well for my opponent. Um, why do I think the matchlock is overpowered? Again, I don't think it's overpowered in general. Um, I think that it actually meshes pretty well with the game. Uh, just in the fact that if you, if you think about a real battle, the troops on this game actually move just a little bit faster. The battle takes a uh, place a little bit faster than it would have in real life and thus for the matchlock units to reload as fast as they do um, kind of, I think, matches the, the, the style of the game in general. 
Um, so that's why I don't necessarily, I mean, like I say they're a little bit overpowered, but I, I wouldn't call them overpowered in a general sense. I do believe they reload a little too fast or are a little too accurate. I kind of think CA needs to nerf at least one of those uh, to bring them even better into balance. Uh, but I do find that the game is playable. However, these level 9 matchlock units um, are not to be underestimated. Uh, they will fire very rapidly, very accurately, and um, they're very dangerous. So, uh, like I said, you don't want to underestimate them, you don't want to attack them from the front. Uh, very dangerous uh, situation whenever your opponent has uh, well-ranked up matchlock units. And so the skirmish battle continues at this point. Um, this bow hero is firing into Bell's uh, matchlock samurai, this uh, bubblegum. <laughs> Bubblegum. You know, it, it's kind of a cutesy name, but at the same time, you know, it, uh, well, I actually forgot what I was going to say. It seemed like I've heard some boxer or something that was like, oh, maybe I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. I don't even know why I brought that up. Now is the time to make fun of air. So uh, leave your comments making fun of my stupidity there if you wish. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I said, these units are skirmishing here. Here comes an enemy Great Guard unit. Wow, that, that casino unit just took a massive blast from the, um, the uh, matchlock, but there are still most of them left, and they're going to wreck this matchlock unit. Uh, Can Critter probably attempting to remove any skirmishing ability from Bell so that she feels like she has to then rush his position on the hill. I'm assuming that's his strategy, um, and an important strategy it would be. Here his Great Guard is just taking uh, extra casualties from her bow hero. The Great Guard is very well armored, but a bow hero probably has armor penetrating effects. Reloads very quick, very fa uh, very good accuracy, so uh, he did take losses in that skirmish. It was not without loss. In fact, uh, it's still being fired upon. I'm not sure if it's going to take any more losses. Indeed it will. There goes three more. This is an expensive Great Guard unit, and um, Can Critter should have gotten it further away from that bow hero, because look, here comes even more shots. Uh, finally, he's going to run it away. Good move by Can Critter there. Doesn't want to leave that unit out and exposed. Uh, right here, he's got a, his bow hero unit moving forward. Again, I'm not sure if these guys are out of ammunition. If that's the purpose for this, they very well could be out of ammunition. Uh, but you can see that uh, Bell's bow hero is absolutely massacring these guys. Uh, they're going straight to the ground. Yeah, and, and these bow heroes actually have some decent armor. So for them to be taken down this fast, I'll give you an idea of uh, the armor penetrating and accuracy effects of, uh, of a bow hero unit. Because that's what Bell is shooting these guys with. Oh! I wonder where these arrows are hitting these guys. That one got him right up in the chest region. And I believe that one's near the face, or in the face. Let's check that out. No, right in the neck. Ouch! Look at that, right through the neck armor. Man, I love the effects on this game. It's absolutely spectacular. All right, so now Bell has done about as much damage as she can do to his skirmishing component. She's now firing her bow hero unit into this Naginata warrior monk, attempting to draw down some of his infantry numbers. And now is the time where she has to uh, to go ahead and attack her opponent on this hill. And she does have more infantry troops than her opponent, but her opponent still has these matchlock units, and he also has the terrain advantage. However, Bell has a leadership general, and the other general is a bow general, I believe, for the most part. He does have a couple of leadership characteristics, but I think uh, appears to be a bow general. So here comes the uh, matchlock fire. You can see it cuts down a lot of these katana samurai, uh, but they're going to get in here, and the damage is going to begin. That matchlock uh, warrior monk unit is now finished, uh, and she's going to just go ahead and move on to these katana samurai, but they are of equal chevron levels, and... Um, they have about the same height position, a little bit in favor of Can Critter. And it looks like Bell is actually going to do this in waves. She's now moving all of her troops to one side in order to focus her attack. And it looks like she's going to go ahead and let these guys just come up here and fight it out. And maybe tire down these troops. But check this out. Out of hiding comes a Yari Cavalry unit on the part of uh, Can Critter. Bell immediately targets them with her bows and starts to cause damage and chase them off. So this was probably meant to be hidden and try and take down Bell's general at the moment of crisis. And had that happened, it would have been very bad indeed. So uh, let me discuss some of the strategy here. Um, you can see that Bell, of course, wanted a better train position. She effectively neutralized um, a superior skirmishing force uh, in the way that she uh, handled her troops. I say superior. She had a couple of bow cav units, so it probably helped equal things out. 
Um, but her opponent did have the archery dojo as well, like I said. Here comes some excellent outflanking maneuvers on the enemy infantry, which is going to be necessary due to the hill advantage. But her opponent is answering with these uh, Naginata warrior monks. And I would think that unless the hill advantage changes it, these Katana Samurai would probably beat those monks one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Here she's going to take out this unit so that she can't be outflanked. The fight in the center, she is actually probably losing at the moment, uh, but it probably won't stay that way. Here comes another Naginata warrior monk. They got the charge on this Katana unit, so that's probably going to give them a slight advantage in that fight. Uh, however, typically in the in the rock, paper, scissors balancing game, swords will beat spears or Naginatas, um, just depending on terrain and everything else. So here she did beat that force, and this is going to be the outflanking maneuver, which is what Bell needs. You can see that some of her troops are wavering. Her general, however, is, uh, was in stand and fight. She's now not in stand and fight. Her general is a leadership general, but also has a bow, and her general is now firing the bow. She must have felt like that was an important move here. Let's see what she is targeting these Naginata warrior monks, and indeed that is an important move. Uh, she's going to be evening the numbers between these units, and you can see this unit has been inspired. So it is turning the tide of this fight into the fa uh, into the favor of her katana samurai. And uh, here this unit of Great Guard is trying to wreck into Bo's uh, outflanking units, and it is causing them massive damage. Um, in fact, Bell's sword units have taken um, extremely high casualties in this fight. Here's that Yari Cavalry unit, which is being cut down by another one of Bell's um, katana samurai. She's doing a good job of assaulting this hill by moving in in waves and making sure to try and outflank and wear down her opponent's uh, numerically inferior troops. Um, so I, I think that was an excellent part, on, uh, an excellent job on her part to to do it this way. Not committing her troops all at once in one big grinding fight where the morale can be broken is important here. Again, you can finally see where the numbers game starts to play in Abel's favor. The enemy troops are worn out, they're surrounded, and she was able to pull off the win against Can Critter. So really hope you enjoyed that battle. I enjoyed commentating it. I uh, hope you found it entertaining, and I hope I was able to showcase some of Bell's uh, excellent skill on Total War games here. She's a great player. Check out her channel. Um, I actually got to play a 2v2 with her. She wasn't very proud of that performance, but uh, I guess wanted me to go ahead and show it anyway, so I'll record that next, um, and I, I'll explain what goes on there. But I thought I wanted to show you this performance. It's a different kind of game than you've seen me play, different type of um, strategy than you've seen me have, so I hope it teaches you something and shows you maybe a new side to this game, and I, and I hope to maybe be able to commentate uh, some of her other battles in the future if I get the opportunity, because like I said, she's um, a very different style of player than myself, and I think that it broadens your Total War horizons a little bit to, uh, to see these other players, and especially a player like Belle that I have a great deal of respect for uh, when it comes to kills. She, she's an excellent player. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Eric Carthage signing off for now, and I'll be back with more in the near future.